Um, before we get started, um, Achilles in our marketing department made a really nice video that kind of captures last season. It, uh, I think it's going to tug at your heartstrings. So we'll show you this video and then we'll go ahead and get started. Last year, we made you a promise to be even better. Next level. That's pretty. And we made it. We won the championship title. And with your help, we can do it again. We've done it three times. And this year, we're coming for our fourth trophy. We want the Rio Grande Valley Vipers to become a dynasty in the NBA champ. Oh, I love it, I love it. It's blessed to be champ. That was a trophy. Yes, I am. That was a and we know our fans can help us reach that goal. You, we are champions, and this year we're going to do it again. And nobody is going to stop us from getting our goal. All for our fans. Go, Vipers! Buy season tickets now, 2019-2020. Season countdown starts in November. Before we make these, uh, these new uh, introductions, these exciting introductions, um, I wanted to do a little bit of housekeeping first and uh, explain some things that are coming up uh, in the new season. The first of which is uh, a specialty jersey that we're going to wear on opening night. We've never done that before. We've had a specialty jersey. So we had uh, designed uh, a, new, a new logo to commemorate our, our third championship. We're the first team in G League history ever to win three championships. Um, as you can see here, we're going to wear that jersey on opening night. Uh, the pro we will be raffling the jerseys off after the game, the proceeds of which will go to our, our Viper Academy. And as you know, at Viper Academies, um, we have hundreds of kids that uh, participate with us, and we're teaching them basketball skills and volleyball skills. So these funds are used to provide not only uniforms, but also uh, equipment and to help the kids who, who don't have the, the, the means to participate. So that's really exciting for us. You see it's a really cool jersey. Uh, we're going to do six of those this season. It's something we've never done before. It's something the league allows. So each one of those jerseys will be uh, earmarked to a specific uh, charity. Also, uh, opening night, we're going to be the, your traditional uh, cer uh, ceremonies to, uh, to commemorate our championship. Uh, we will be having a special giveaway, uh, 1,000. Replica rings will be given away to the fans that night. It's, the, the, it was really cool about this ring. It's going to be cast in the same mold that the regular rings that all the players and coaches are going to get. So that'll be real cool. So there'll be a thousand of those out there. So that's really exciting, and I want to come out early to, to partake in that. And of course, uh, there'll be a lot of pregame festivities. It's going to be a super night. It's going to be the last time we're going to celebrate the, the game because after that, we're going to move on and uh, look forward to the new season. So also that night, we will have our, our ring ceremony and with the players and coaches from last season. We'll receive their championship rings, and we also will unveil the uh, championship banner. It will be our third banner. So we're really looking forward, uh, we're looking forward to that. Like I say, it's going to be a night to celebrate, but also be a night to put that behind and start working on the new season. So uh, and also look forward to a pick a seat event that we're going to have. Uh, those of you that are not uh, season ticket holders, uh, it'll be coming up probably within the next few weeks where you'll be able to come out and check out the, uh, check out the arena, check out the seats, try some seats out and see if anything you, that uh, you like and maybe we can talk about uh, signing you up uh, to become a season ticket holder. So now let me, uh, let me go on with the, with the introductions. This is always, it's, kind of, it's really cool to, uh, when we get to announce new coaches, you know, this job has been, has been really good to a lot of coaches. We've had a lot of great coaches come through. A lot of guys that have come through and, and made an impact on us, but also it's helped their careers, helped them advance on to bigger and better things. 
Uh, for example, Chris, Chris Finch was here, uh, won our first championship. He's now an assist, assistant coach with the, uh, with the New Orleans Pelicans. Uh, Nick Nurse, who was here last year, won the NBA championship, former Viper coach. Uh, Matt Brassi is now on staff with the Rockets. And, uh, and of course, Joseph Blair from last year, as many of you know, uh, signed a contract with the Philadelphia 76ers. So he's also moved on to the next level. So this job has been a very important job. It's led to a lot of, uh, a lot of good coaches, a stepping stone for them. So uh, we're hoping that this will be a stepping stone uh, for coach. So uh, let me uh, introduce first uh, Travis Stockbridge. Travis, as many of you know, has been with us for quite a while. He was with us probably about four seasons ago as an as, uh, as associate coach. Uh, and he helped out with the team. He started out very young. He's the second youngest GM in, uh, in G League history now at the age of 24. But he's been with us quite a, quite a long ways. He's very familiar with our program, very familiar with our styles, which is really cool about the, the way the Rockets have decided to do this. The transition is going to be very smooth because we, we're promoting from within, which is always cool to see guys that have been with us, guys that have earned the call up, uh, earned the promotion, get to advance their careers. But also it's going to make our transition really smooth uh, we've been very successful here with the Rockets and the, and the Vipers. We've had a very unique style for, for 10 years. We run and gun. We put that ball up a lot. We play real intense defense. It's a style that's uh, it's really fan-friendly. Fan fan it's, it's a lot of fun to watch. So that transition is going to be made a whole lot smoother because we're promoting from within, and there's, there's not going to be any hiccups here. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep going with our style. We're going to still keep being the, the explosive team that uh, we've been in the past. We've had an unprecedented run here for 10 seasons now. Five of those 10 seasons, we made the finals. Three of those seasons, we won the championship. So that's really unheard of. It's really hard to do. It's not easy to win these things. Uh, a lot of things have to go right. You're, you're, you have to have good coaches. You've got to have good staff. You get the, st the kids have got to buy into the program. You've got to have fan support. Our fans last year were incredible. We, uh, we ended up tripling attendance from the previous season, so all of those things played an important role in our success last year. So we're hoping to uh, build on that and have an even, an even better year. So uh, let me turn this over to, to uh, Travis so uh, he can make an important announcement here about, about the coach. Uh, first off, I'd like to say thanks to everybody for coming out, and thank you, Renee. Um, also, thanks to, to Mr. Cantu, uh, Renee, Hondo, the entire ownership group here, all the staff. Uh, as Renee said, I've been this will be my fourth year working pretty closely with RGV um, and and the G League in general uh, from the Houston Rockets perspective, and it's just been first class all the way. You know, I. When I came down here, my first year um, was was doing a little bit of everything, a little bit of coaching, a little bit of front office, a little bit of everything, and um, just fell in love with being down here. And now to to be able to grow into this role has has really been a, a, a joy for me. So I'm really looking forward to to getting started. And as as Renee said, we'll be you know everybody should expect to see very similar to what we've seen in the past with. Uh, really fun team, really exciting play style, uh, and hopefully a, lo a lot of wins still. Uh, hopefully just try to, to continue the winning tradition we've had and, and uh, build off last year and fill some big shoes that, that those before us have left. So also uh, just want to say thanks to, I know they're not here, but Daryl Morey, Jimmy Paulus, the rest of the staff in Houston, uh, Jimmy being our past GM here in RGV, those guys just for giving me this opportunity. Um, you know, and, and for their continued support. A um, little about me, started as, a, as an intern in Houston um, when I was a freshman in college, have continued to work there since then. This will be my eighth year. And, you know, those guys up in Houston have just been super supportive the whole way. So just, just want to send some credit their way as well. Um, you know, as, as I think everybody here knows, RGV is such an important part of, of everything we do in Houston. You know, when we're looking at draft picks, when we're looking at free agent signings, especially young players, we're, we're having the conversation, you know, how will they develop in RGV? How can we use RGV to get them better? And I think you've all seen the evidence of that over the years, you know, whether it's last year with Daniel House going from RGV to being a key, a key piece for a playoff Rockets team and hopefully key piece on a championship team in Houston this year. 
Um, you know, Michael Frazier earned a call up. We've had many other players in the past, and and that's that's a huge part of what we do up in Houston, and a huge part of why we value RGV and the Vipers organization here. But even beyond that, you know, this Vipers organization it stands alone as as its own independent um, independent organization, independent successes, and those successes speak for themselves. You know, with as Renee said, five finals appearances, three championships in ten years. You know, that that's pretty unheard of. At especially at the G League level where, where you have such great roster turnover, but, but really at any, any level of basketball, that's, that's terrific success, any level of professional sports. So that speaks to the staff here, the ownership, everybody that's involved. It's, it's just a first-class organization and a first-class experience. So um, I'm excited to be a part of this, excited to carry on this success, um, and also excited to introduce everybody to our newest head coach, Mahmoud Abdel Fateh. Um, Mahmoud has been... <laughs> I hope I have it by now. We we roomed together on the road a few years ago, so uh, so Mahmoud, and, and he can tell you a little bit more. But he's been with us. This will be his third year now. Started off as a, a basketball ops assistant here in the valley. Uh, with RGV and uh, did a little bit of everything, was really an assistant coach for us uh, due to some unforeseen circumstances when he was hired. Um, moved into a, a full-time assistant coaching role last year, associate head coach, was a key piece of the championship team last year. Anybody that was involved with that would tell you that, um, not just from his loud voice, but from everything he does behind the scenes as well, and his work ethic and professionalism. So Mahmoud's been a huge part of our success the past few years. Uh, we'll continue to be as our newest head coach. So everybody, please give it up for Mahmoud, and I'll hand it over to him. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, everyone. I uh, just want to thank you all for coming. I do have to say about this time last year, I remember being in the video room in Houston, uh, watching JB's press conference with uh, Matt Brazzi, Sagar, Devin, and uh, Robbie, and all I was thinking was, don't mess this one up, big fella. <laughs> I'm sure he's in Philly right now watching, he's like, don't mess this one up, my mood. <laughs> so, but I just want to thank you all for coming. Uh, like Travis said, um, everyone you know, involved with the Houston Rockets organization, uh, everyone uh, with the RGV Vipers, I appreciate you giving me this opportunity. Uh, like he said, I came down here 24 months ago uh, from St. Cloud State University, you know, being up there for four years um, as an assistant coach. You know, a good friend of mine, Cody Topper, you know, gave me a call, and I'll never forget the day that Travis reached out to me um, via email, um, probably about a month, month and a half after he said he would email me, and <laughs> saying if I would be interested in a position with the Vipers. And I told them I would, I sent my resume, and about mid-October they started going through the phone calls and the process, and I got a call probably around October 22nd that I got the job. And you know, it was about a Sunday afternoon, I told the team at St. Cloud State University uh, Monday morning, uh, ended up driving down that Tuesday, it was like a 26 hour drive, I made it in about 28. I stopped in OKC at a bus stop, slept for about an hour and a half, more than I need, and God bless. So I, I'll just never forget everything that I've been through um, in the two years, uh, learning from Matt Brazzi, um, giving me the opportunity to grow um, as a coach. You know, once Cody Toppert left uh, to Northern Arizona to take over that G League team, uh, as much as I've learned from him as well, and then now uh, working under uh, JB as well. For you guys that have been around, uh, you know the relationship that me and JB uh, had. Um, he's like a brother to me. Um, that's, that's my guy. Um, I learned a lot from him, learned a lot from Brazi, learned a lot from Cody um, and everyone involved, uh, from Jaime, from Allen, uh, from Craig, Manny, um, Chat, you know, everybody around that's been a part of the RGV. Like I said, just because I'm, you know, in the head coaching position doesn't mean, you know, I'm now on this pedestal. Just understand that we're all in this together. Um, the RGV Vipers, the community of the Valley, um, I'm truly looking forward uh, to working with you guys, working for you, um, and hopefully, you know, we can have another successful season, you know, make it enjoyable f for you guys, for you ladies, um, and it can be enjoyable for us as well. So, um, but I just thank you guys for coming. I really appreciate it. Go Vipers.
thanks, Coach. I, you know, I really, uh, I myself would also like to thank the Rockets. They've been tremendous partners, and this relationship has been amazing. Uh, anything we've asked for, they've always, uh, they've always come through, and uh, Daryl Morey is just a maniac when it comes to competing. Uh, he wants to win all the time, and we've been blessed to have him uh, at the top there because uh, every year we're super, super competitive. When uh, a lot of teams have ups and downs, we don't, we've never had that. We've never had that. So we've been blessed. And so I really want to thank the Houston Rockets for that, uh, that relationship. It's been a great relationship, and hopefully we'll keep that going strong. Uh, well, does anybody here have a question for Coach? Uh, go ahead, sir. So I have to say, uh, many of you might not know, but Matt Brazzi uh, started the tradition. The head coach does not sit down. <laughs> so JB kept that going, and I think I'm going to have to keep that going. Um, but it's, you know, it's more just uh, making the decisions rather than being the guy that's just throwing out suggestions, which I like to do. And JB would have to like, hey, that's enough. I can only take so many in 30 seconds. Um, but now being, being that guy that has to decide whether it's off the court, on the court, practice time, substitutions, rotations, you know, community involvement, you know, to make sure that our guys are being put in the best situation to succeed, but making sure we're doing our job, you know, as a coach and staff, being good role models for the community, our players as well. So that's, that's definitely the biggest change, just making the decisions rather than making the suggestions now. Thank you. Anybody else? Come on. No. <laughs> that will not even be close. <laughs> Ask him if he can tie a tie. <laughs> um, I do not. JB wins that one, and he can have that. Well, if, if, if nobody has any questions. We got uh, one? We got one. Go ahead, please. Um, you know, uh, this is, you know, the first opportunity being put in this position as a head coach. Um, the only other time, you know, I, I coached as a head coach was in high school and AU um, as well. But being put at this level, uh, working with the same organization for a number of years. Um, but I'm just really looking forward to still, you know, doing a lot of my same roles that I did last year, getting the players better and helping them achieve their goals. Uh, but like I said, just, just being the head coach, you know, I can say what I, you know, what I'm thinking now, but I don't know until I'm thrown into the fire, you know, until that the first mistake happens or uh, a situation comes up that I have to solve and I'm not sure how to deal with it. Who do I go to? So everything's going to be a challenge. Um, and like I told a couple of people asked me, you know, what am I looking forward to? I'm looking forward to making mistakes because I know it's going to come, um, but I'm ready. I have a plan B. I have a plan C, you know, to adjust and make corrections as well uh, because I'm prepared for it. So. I'm just looking forward to making mistakes. What about technicals? We haven't had a technical in two seasons. I'm trying to save my money. <laughs> For sure. Yep. So we'll be in Houston uh, for the next couple of weeks and then just going through uh, the staff as we put that stuff together and then hopefully come training camp um, October 28th. Uh, we'll have that ready. Our draft is on October 26th. You know, we'll be working with uh, Travis and uh, Jimmy Paulus and Daryl uh, to finalize our staff. Uh, Devin Blair will be joining us. Um, he's with the Houston Rockets right now. He's been with the Houston Rockets organization uh, for a number of years. Uh, so he'll be uh, with me on staff as an assistant coach. I'm really looking forward to him. Me and him have a great relationship. Um, so I'm looking to build that camaraderie even more uh, over the next couple months, couple years. And then uh, the final assistant spot and interns are also being worked on as well. But we have a number of good candidates and somebody that can fit, you know, what we're looking for and that will enjoy the Valley as much as me and Travis did. So thank you. I will let uh, Travis answer that for you. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that one. So 
the salaries, uh, the G League is a little different than other leagues in this way, and the salaries are determined by the league, not by the individual teams, and uh, actually paid out by the league as well, not by the individual teams. And so all of those decisions come at a league level. Obviously, you know, I, I think they take input from different teams, from different, you know, that's more at the, the NBA level. Um, but those decisions all come at the league, and then we're basically responsible for implementing everything. Uh, but that's not something that we have control over, unfortunately. Equitable. What's that? Equitable. Yes. Yeah, and so uh, in the past, the the salaries had been there had been different levels. Um, you know, where where certain players could make a little bit more, certain players could make a little bit less. Um, but now it's, I believe, thirty five thousand across the board for every player. At, at least correct and then there are bonuses and all these other things involved so um, you know and then some players can also earn a little bit more money on two-way contracts exhibit 10 contracts some of these other NBA type structures um, but the the base salary is is that 35 minimum Everybody's waiting to see when when Sea Walker turns. Um, yeah, I, I can't comment specifically only because we haven't signed any contracts yet. Um, but I can just broadly tell you that there will be some familiar faces back this year. Um, you know, some players from the championship team, potentially some players from the year before. Still working through details with a lot of those guys. Um, but I think. It will not, it, I can promise, it definitely won't be a whole new group of faces that, that everybody's got to get used to. It'll be a mix, a few new and a few few returning. When will you guys release uh, the roster? So we won't know the roster until after the draft. Which, so, and as Mahmoud said, the draft will be uh, October 26th. Training camp, we'll have a training camp roster not long after that. Training camp begins October 28th. And then we'll have, you know, I think it's a week or a week and a half uh, to trim our training camp roster down to a final roster for the season. Um, but as I'm sure a lot of you know, that roster can change. We had, what, 27 players play for us last year. So, so what you see in, in November and December might not be what, what you're seeing out there in, uh, in April, hopefully. I was traveling last night, so I didn't get to see it, but I know the Rockets played a team from Shanghai. Mm -hmm. Um, let me think through. So, yeah, so Daniel House started, played very well. Um, he's going to be a key piece for us in Houston this year. Um, Michael Frazier, former Viper, uh, didn't play, dealing with a, a minor injury right now. Uh, nothing that should keep him out long term. Uh, Isaiah Hartenstein, really good stretch in the first half. Um, as he played, I'm trying to think. And Gary Clark looked good. He's, he's looked very good. Um, so really, really exciting group. Clint, oh, Clint, yeah. Well, Clint, Clint was incredible last night. Clint looked like all world. So he's, uh, he's obviously a huge key to what we do in Houston. So, um, yeah, a lot, a lot of good, you know, I think most players on the team look good, but a lot of, a lot of good stuff from, from players you guys are all familiar with. That's right. Yeah, he didn't look as good. <laughs> no, D Demo was obviously a, a big part for us for, for a long time and, um, you know, doing, have, doing a great job with his career over there in China and he played in the NBA a little bit last year as well. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's always hard for, for a guy like that to, to come in and be the guy against, against you know, our, our regulars. So he, he did an admirable job as well. For sure. Um, first off, just so you know, back to back is very difficult. <laughs> just so you know, I'm taking a little pressure off me right now. Just so you know, very difficult. 
It's never happened before. It's never happened. Yeah. Um, but it, it's all about the first couple of weeks. I mean, when you when you get to training camp, you know, and that just goes back into uh, some of the philosophy beliefs that I have. Um, and it's all just about the culture that you establish. And if you're able to hold the guys accountable, <clears throat> you know, from day one, it can be 5, 10, 15, or 20 different guys. When you have that standard, what the guys are working for every single day, you know, they can't let you down and you won't let them down as a coach. Because the, the most important thing about the G League, we all want to win. We all want to win with what we do. But it's about helping those guys achieve their goals. And they're in the G League for a reason. You know, multiple guys are using it for a stepping stone, you know, whether it's to get to the NBA or get overseas. And my job is to help them achieve that goal. And obviously last year, I know people may think, well, it's easy to say because we won the championship, but we had the second most players in the G League, and we just happened to win. But I believe that it's the culture that JB and me and the staff and everyone involved, you know, established from day one. So when guys were coming in and out to that locker room and there was one or two new guys, the other 10 guys in the locker room let them know how it's going to be. Like, hey, you know, you shouldn't be late. Hey, this is how coach wants you guys to wear the uniform or on time or music or whatever it is. Just those little things that might not matter mean the most, especially especially in the G League when you have just so much turnaround throughout. Uh, but that, that's the biggest thing. We have our culture. Uh, we have the system in place. Like I said, what the Houston Rockets do, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to hold them accountable to it um, because, like I said, the player development is the number one thing of the G League. And when they understand that our best interests – is for them to succeed in life, then our job is, you know, is much easier. So we can just work together on that end and hopefully continue to win. So, anybody else? I'm going once. Okay. Well, again, thank you all for coming out. Really do appreciate you. Appreciate our fans. We couldn't do it without you guys. Like I said, another sales pitch, but there's plenty of opportunities for season tickets. We still have some premium. Uh, Suites and, and loge boxes and even a few red tables available. Those are great seats. Uh, we invite you to please come out and join the, join the Viper Nation, join the Viper family. We'd love to have you. And uh, uh, Coach and Travis will be available for one-on-ones uh, right now. Thank you all. Bye-bye.